if you could, <laughs> if you could take me to the next slide. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so this is our um, volunteer support team. Um, Amanda is the director of membership. I am the team lead and I also specialize in GS Learn and the volunteer toolkit. Um, Michelle Moulton is one of our volunteer support specialists who specializes in new leaders along with Anne Marie. Uh, Dee Dee Rice um, specializes in troop banking and Juliette's are individual girls. And Carrie Zames is our troop travel specialist. So to think a little bit about getting our troops out and about, um, this is a great time of year to start thinking about that. Even though today may be the coldest day of the year, <laughs> it's still a good time to think about it because pretty soon you're going to have all those proceeds in your troop account from your cookie sale program. Um, and it's a good time to think about what all exciting and fun things your girls can go out and do together. Um, I pulled this chart right from our troop packet, which I'll have a link for you on the next slide so you can see where that is. Um, but this is our Girl Scout travel progression chart. Um, and this is a really good way to think about travel with your girls, getting out in the community, because it kind of breaks it down to where to start to get them all the way up to in independent travel. So where you can start when you have daisies, or even if you have brownies and juniors and haven't had a chance to get out in the community so much, because as we know, the world has been a little wild the past few years. <laughs> um, what you can do is some local field trips. Um, that's anything that you can do right within your community. You can take a walk to the park, have a little picnic together, um, schedule a time to visit your local fire department or police station, um, kind of get a sense of what that civic engagement looks like in your town. That's a great place to start for local trips and to give the girls just a little bit of a tease um, for what it's like they can go do some travel with girls. Scouts. Up next you have day trips, um, which is something that takes just one day. You can go to your destination and come back. Um, even though we have lots of nice rural places here in New Hampshire and Vermont, we're within driving distance of lots of really fun things we can do with our girls. Um, I think of anything from doing like a baking class at King Arthur Flower in Vermont, um, or taking a trip down to Boston and going to that flower show they have every spring, which is a super fun time um, for girls of any any age. Um, the great thing to keep in mind too is not to be deterred by the cost of things, um, especially call ahead, let them know that you're a Girl Scout troop, it's a nonprofit organization, ask if there's anything they can do to help you out with the cost. Um, I know from the past the time of the flower show, um, they've been really generous in the ticket prices if you just call ahead and talk to them. After you do some of those day trips, um, the next step for your travel progression is doing an overnight of one or two nights. Um, this is a great time to use one of our camp properties, um, get a sense of what it's like for camping, give the girls a little taste of that, um, or do something a little closer to home. You know, get an Airbnb, do, you know, do a couple of days um, so you can try that out with them there. From there, we move on to regional trips, which is where you spend three or four nights away. Um, I wanna give a shout out to the Rocking Horse Ranch, which is in New York. Um, I bet we're gonna see lots of like excitement like in the chat and the videos when I mention that, because I know a lot of troops go there and they have a fantastic time. Um, I see a question in the chat. I will get to you after I'm done talking here, I promise. <laughs> um, those regional trips are kind of a great way to take it to that next step. Um, once you've done a regional trip, you're kind of feeling like, okay, I know how the girls behave when we're overnight together. We have a routine. We know what we're going to do for our mornings. We know what to do for the evenings. We know who needs to kind of like, you know, have their sleeping bag over here and their sleeping bag over here and who wants to call their parent at night. You have it all down pat. You can start doing those nice national trips. Um, and like Trisha said earlier, we do have that national convention coming up in 2023, um, which is a great national one to start planning for. Um, international trips are super fun. Um, we've had troops go to London. We've had troops go to Paris. Um, you can go to our chalet, which is in Switzerland, I believe. I could be wrong. Yes. <laughs> go to our chalet in Switzerland, which is one of the Girl Scout World Centers. Um, lots of great places you can go abroad with the girls. And just think about what an amazing opportunity it is that they can earn that money and travel with their friends and travel with you. And what a great experience that could be for them to talk to people, you know, to experience and then to talk to people as they get older for their college applications, for their job applications. Like 
who can say that they did international travel before they graduated high school? Like that's pretty fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the last step in that travel progression is independent travel, um, which they can do with the Girl Scout destinations, um, which would mean they would go with other girls and with a council representative and a volunteer representative to support them. Um, and they get to go and explore various places in the world. I know recently there's been a trip to Greece and a trip to the Galapagos Islands. So lots of exciting opportunities there too. Um, next slide, please. So when you look at what you need to do travel, um, in our council, we have everything that you need to get ready to get and to go right in our troop packet. So you can see that link right on top. Um, it's girlscoutsgwm.org. Um, but if when you go there, you see volunteer on the top, you hover your mouse over volunteer, and then you click troop packet. And all of this stuff can be found right in the field trip and troop travel section. Um, and we have documents that will walk you through everything from figuring out what kind of trip you want to go to, to what paperwork you need to submit to council, um, helps you figure out what your budget needs to be, um, you know, helps you organize your emergency contacts, it gives you the health forms that you need. Um, it's all really right there, which I find super helpful because when you're planning, you can print that packet out, go through it with the girls, you know, everyone can have an assignment from there and they can start planning together. Um, the approval process for travel should be completed at least a month in advance. Um, ideally for these kind of like international national trips, we do wanna see a little more than a month of planning, but we understand that right now, especially with COVID, your timelines might be a little bit tighter. Um, so if you're, you know, you realize you have an opportunity that's coming up in a couple months, you wanna seize it, that's totally fine. Um, just, you know, reach out, start working on the paperwork um, and we'll keep in touch with you and help you through that process. We have staff available that can help you answer any of those travel questions. Um, like I mentioned on our intro slide, Carrie Zames is our travel specialist. Um, and we can have staff that can do a Zoom with your troop to talk to them about travel ideas, um, help them bounce ideas off of each other, help them figure out that planning process. We can be available to help out with that. Um, and just like I said, it's a great opportunity to use those Girl Scout cookie program funds um, and for the girls to get out there and see the world. And then if you can pop to the next slide, please. Um, and just wanted to cap on to my troop travel discussion really quick. Um, an important part of getting out there and seeing the world with the girls is making sure that you have the training that you need so that you feel comfortable and ready to get out there. Um, so for our new leaders who just started October 1st, <coughs> excuse me, we do have the Successful Leader Learning Series, which is required for you. Um, and it is available, but not required for experienced leaders. Uh, but that's right there on GS Learn. So what you're gonna do is go to that same website, girlscoutsgwm.org, click My GS on the top right, click My Account, and then click GS Learn in the menu on the left. Um, and that's gonna take you right to GS Learn where you can see the Successful Leader Learning Series. There's some other little trainings in there from GSUSA and I'm working on uploading some additional trainings in there as well. Um, thank you for letting me spiel about troop travel. Um, I did see there were messages in the chat, so I'm gonna go and check those now. But if you have any more in-depth questions you wanna go over, I'll be in a breakout room um, towards the end of our meeting today so we can chat a little bit more then. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. Lots of great information. I know there's probably going to be a lot of questions, so definitely check out the break room here, breakout room here in a little bit so she can help answer all of those questions for you. So now I believe we are going to turn it over to Karen Martin for Program and Property. Hi, Amanda. Thanks so much. Uh, if you don't mind moving to the first slide. Um, so the first slide is our team, if you haven't met us. Uh, I'm Karen Martin, I'm the director, and there's a picture of me approaching the summit of Mount Mansfield on a very much nicer day than today. Uh, Jasmine Averbuck's our manager of outdoor program, and she is there leading a winter camping excursion with uh, some girls at Twin Hills. Uh, Josh Dusset and Craig McClare are our property uh, folks, so they keep all of the properties up and running. And then we have two program specialists and one program specialist, Laura Barrett, who does virtual for us. And then Ashley and Kristen do programs 
uh, live and in person with all of our, our girls. And then we're starting to hire in our summer camp staff already. So it's not too soon to think about summer, but that's our program and properties team. Can I have the next slide? Tonight, I wanted to just share some upcoming programs. You know that the calendar on our website shares all of those upcoming programs. When you click on them, you get a description. And then when you click on register, it takes you to the registration page. So some fun upcoming things for our seniors and ambassadors. We still have the Astronomy Club, which is meeting every month and doing different projects. Uh, we have Mission Sisterhood and Justice as journeys that are being led with a focus on advocacy. So it's in collaboration with our Girls Rock, the Capital Girl Scouts, but we've opened these to seniors and ambassadors as well. So that if they're looking at advocacy, maybe they're thinking about GRTC for next year, maybe they're thinking about getting involved, uh, advocating for things, uh, this is a great opportunity for them to join that. And then we've resumed the higher award info sessions. So if you have girls who are working on their silver or gold award, if they're thinking about that, then uh, this is an opportunity for them to jump into a webinar, meet the staff who work with those girls, and then find out some more information about how to get started. If you're in a, working on your gold award, how to get started and go gold, all of those sorts of things. For cadets, we're gonna resume program training. So program aid training will happen in Thetford uh, coming up quickly. And then again, it will happen in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. So we're gonna offer those two program aid trainings as we move forward. Brownies, Juniors, and Cadets, we're going to do another round of badge blasts coming up this spring. It'll be robotics and robots. Uh, we're hoping to offer them in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, and Rutland, Vermont. We're also looking at resuming Winterfest and Winterpalooza. So Winterfest is for the younger girls, Winterpalooza for older girls. Uh, they come this year, it's in Bedford, New Hampshire. As you know, we move it around, but we always need to move to where there's a lake so that we can do ice fishing, which is one of the most popular uh, things I think we do for Winter Palooza right up there with the uh, cocoa bar, the hot cocoa bar. Um, and then All Girl Scouts, the GSUSA Tree Promise is continuing. That's right now a patch program that our girls can do on their own. And then we have every other month a workshop that we do a little bit of a focus this month. It's on working with your local tree and uh, conservation commissions. So lots of great programs coming up. If you want to change the slide for us, Amanda. Awesome. So troop camping and property rental, I heard earlier tonight, people are starting to think about already uh, fall camping and spring camping. So if you go to the website, you can see the property availability calendar. So we're really excited about that. When you click into it, it shows you which things are rented at which properties. So if you were headed to Twin Hills and you wanted to rent the Pixie Cabin, you can see maybe that flask has already got it rented. Uh, so you can then transfer over and maybe rent the pavilion instead, or you can change weekends but all of that is right online and transparent for everyone to see. So we do have the um, new uh, property guide. So that's there to give you some descriptions and updates. Property rentals are still free if you're having a meeting on a property and there's certain properties that are most available because they're most uh, easily accessed, especially in the winter. And then new, the campery reservation form. So we've streamlined how to apply for a campery and how to organize all of your paperwork and payment, all of those things. So there's now just a quick two-page guide if you're just starting out planning a campery and the form is within the guide. And then coming soon, we'll have the equipment rental form. It's January and we have six rentals for snowshoes in the next four weeks. So um, we're gonna just take the equipment rental form and make it one simple form. So if you're just looking for snowshoes, that's an easier way to do that. So lots of activity on our properties, even in the winter time. So trade to the next slide, please. And then of course, we always wanna dream about summertime. So summer camp registration is open. Um, I knew someone was asking about the camp guide that's coming soon, but you can always get to all of these programs from the activities page on the website. So go to summertime and it will show you all of the different programs. So traditional day camp program where girls come for the day, they can ride a bus or they can get dropped off. Twin Hills, Seawood, and Kettleford are all operating this summer. The resident camp at Camp Farnsworth, so overnight camp, will be open July 5th to the 12th. Frolic is the 5th through the 8th. So if you're new to a resident camp, Frolic is a week, it's actually four days, where all of the campers have finished first grade through fifth grade. So they're younger than the typical campers at camp. 
and everyone in camp is that age. So if it's your first time at camp, it's a little bit of a shorter week. If you're new to camp, it's uh, a little bit better with all the campers being about the same age. There's no big kids that might be scary, um, even though they're mostly friendly and helpful. Um, and at the same time, the CITs will start that same week and they're gonna move in uh, fifth and stay through the 22nd. So there's plenty to do at camp this summer. We also are continuing with the troop camping events. So Camp Farnsworth will have troop camping from July 8th to the 10th. That's a weekend when you can come with your whole troop. Meals are included in the dining hall and we spread you out through the camp and you enjoy all of those programs. The troop camping overnights happen at the day camp. So Kettleford has two of them, Seawood has one and Twin Hills has one. So there's uh, an overnight. So we do them as a one night overnight because if you're new to camping overnight with your girls, one night you can camp with Outdoor Adventure Workshop, which is an online training that's free. So you don't need to take extensive training to take your girls on the overnight and our staff are there to help run the activities. We're also going to continue family theme camping weekends. So Camp Farnsworth has everybody's birthday and 4th of July weekend. Uh, Camp Kettleford's going to have two weekends, Winter Wonderland and Famoween. And then Camp Seawood will have Thamoline and Camp Twin Hills will have Winter Wonderland. So no matter how you're ready to camp, if you want to go for um, traditional camp or if you want to go with your troop or go with your girls, there's lots of opportunities. Would you change that slide, please? There's also some new opportunities at camp this summer. So at Camp Twin Hills, we're going to offer four nights of what we're calling evening camp, where a girl can come with her adult and do an activity traditional to camp. So there's gonna be terrific tie-dye. So for those two hours, they'll come with their adult, they'll do some different tie-dyes, they'll enjoy some other activities in camp, and that's her whole camp experience. There's four different ones that girls can sign up for with the adult of their choice and come to camp and just enjoy an evening at camp. For Camp Seawood, we're offering something for the older girls, travel camps. So just like traditional day camp, girls will come to Camp Seawood in the morning but then they're going to leave on an adventure for the day and come back to camp to be picked up in the afternoon. So surf to sea, they're gonna try some surfing. They're gonna explore different beach communities. Uh, art adventure, they'll be doing different kinds of art in the local community as well. And then we have two different overnights. One is at Camp Kettleford. We're doing a camp-in movie night where girls can come with their families. They're gonna camp on the big field all together, sort of um, if you've ever stayed at like an encampment where they've spaced out tents in a big row and you get like a 12 by 12 square. And then we're gonna show a giant movie and then camp overnight. And Camp Seawood overnight is for girls independently to come. We're gonna do owls, bats, and midnight snacks. They'll arrive in the evening time, stay up late, they'll do night hikes and glow in the dark things and make some midnight snacks and they'll go home early the next morning. So some new things to enjoy as well. All right, can you change the slide please? And that's it for us for outdoor. I think we have a breakout room. Is that right? So I'm gonna hand this back over, I think, to Carrie's team. Thank you, Karen. And I'm going to have Christine jones Airy go ahead and join us and go ahead and go over this slide. So much, Amanda. Um, so I'm excited to share a few other um, program offerings that we have coming from our events and marketing team. Um, so the big thing that we wanted to highlight is our Global Leadership Conference returning in person this year. We're very excited to be back at the beautiful Salve Regina University. Um, this weekend is for girls in grades nine through 12. Um, so our seniors and our ambassadors. Uh, girls will choose from a range of over 50 different workshops. Um, their workshop sessions will last about an hour um, and they'll get to cover some great topics. Um, some that you can see listed there from STEAM to global issues, stress management, and more. Registration is now open for this event, so we'll be happy to have you guys check it out. Um, you can find the registration on our website from the activities page, and there is also a web page specific for the um, Global Leadership Conference. Um, we have two great um, keynote speakers that will be joining us um, during the weekend as well to share with the girls. It's a great um, experience for our older girls. There are girls that come from all councils um, around New England and up and down the East Coast. Um, and so it's an opportunity for them to really, um, to, you know, network and to um, have those um, Girl Scout ex inter exchange experiences with other girls. 
um, and the cost is $100 per participant. Um, so definitely a great opportunity for our girls to check out. If you have any other questions about that, I'd be happy to answer them for you. And then if we can go to the next slide, please. A few other programs that we do have um, coming up here in the next month or so locally across the council is on February 5th, we have Make a Splash that happens up in Jay, Vermont. Um, this is an opportunity to check out the um, great indoor pump house they have up there at Jay Peak. Uh, the girls get a behind the scenes tour as well as the opportunity to enjoy some time at the water park. Um, this is $29 per person and the registration deadline is coming up on January 23rd. So something that you don't wanna miss out on and it's available to Brownies through ambassadors. We also have Frozen Farm happening in Keene, New Hampshire. This is an experience for Brownies, juniors and cadets. Um, they get to spend some time out in the snow, doing some snowshoeing, learning to identify animal tracks and more different things like that. This program registration is also, the deadline is coming up on January 20th. And then finally, Tracks in the Snow happening in St. Johnsbury, Vermont. Um, this program is for our brownies and juniors. The registration deadline is the 27th of January. And again, gonna be an opportunity for girls to learn about animals in the winter time, if they hibernate, different special adaptations they may have. Um, so some great programs to check out for our troops. Some virtual programs that we have coming up, we have a partnership with the American Red Cross and they're gonna be offering two programs for us, one for brownies and one for juniors. The brownies one is called Prepare with Pedro and it's about just learning um, safety, especially safety around the home. Um, this event is free and again, happening virtually online. February 1st, we have the Pillowcase Project also with the American Red Cross. And again, going to be an opportunity to talk about being prepared um, in case of emergencies. Um, also a free event, and it will work towards some of the requirements for the Junior Safety Award. And then finally, our last virtual program that we wanted to highlight is the Yoga for Daisies. Um, exactly as it sounds, Yoga for Daisies. Um, this one does have a cost in it of $10. And these are, again, are all the registration deadlines are coming up towards the end of January. So check them out if you think your girls might be interested. And I think that might be it for me. Thank you, Christine. And now I'm going to check real quick. I'm not sure if product has any updates tonight, but they're definitely going to have a breakout room. Um, I don't you can know always talk about cookies, Amanda. So <laughs> I knew um, you could. <laughs> of course, absolutely. We devoted a whole month last, practically last uh, month in December. Many of you were on that call. We we did a lot of cookie updates then, but I, we just wanted to reiterate. Obviously, we started the sale on January first, and initial orders are going through January twenty third. Robin and I are both on the call tonight, and we look forward to having a breakout session that anyone wants to join. Um, the only other thing I think to remind folks is to make sure you're setting up your digital cookie site for your Girl Scout. Right now, it looks like we're trending ahead for, of last year for demand, which is great, but we know that participation is down slightly as of right now. So make sure that you're encouraging your girls um, to, to register for digital cookie because it's a great and very easy um, non-contact way, especially to, to be able to be involved in the sale. So um, we look forward to answering any of your questions during the, the upcoming breakout session. <laughs> 